Okay, it's starting to get eerily quiet. Everyone is about to watch the total solar eclipse. We've got about five minutes left. All right, Leo, how are you feeling about this weather? Feel excellent about the weather, I'm very confident. Okay, we're going, we're driving, we're driving slow. There's no one else on the road. Liam is acting as a uh, cameraman here. Conditions are quickly deteriorating here. We've also uh, got a telescope from a European company. So we're gonna be unboxing a six inch Dobsonian. And if this weather lets up, we are supposed to be attending a public star party. We've got a flashing lights on the moose lot. Oh yeah, I actually see a moose right over there. Do you? you see a moose? Just kidding. <laughs> I don't think the moose are driving this way. It's only one of two boxes for the Dobsonian. Successful. Box two. It's all linemen here at the hotel, and <laughs> we're parked just surrounded by line trucks. There's Liam. So, uh, my name is John Reed. And uh, most people know me as the author. So we drove five hours north of Halifax to Miramichi, New Brunswick to attend the region's first astronomy trade show called Astronomy East. It was here that we assembled this Stepsonian telescope sent to us from astroshop.eu. We included this as part of our Stargaze Nova Scotia exhibit and used it to show the attendees of the event how to use a basic telescope. During the trade show, I gave a talk on the history of solar observation, which included experiments I'd like to do in a future YouTube video, like measuring the distance to Mars and thus the Sun using parallax and Kepler's third law. I also had the pleasure of meeting the renowned astrophotography team Trevor Jones and his wife Ashley Northcott. Their talks were great, and I look forward to meeting them again in the future. Liam acting as our cameraman is off taking photos for other people. So here's the telescope all set up. Now I did request a red dot finder to replace the finder scope that came with the telescope and the company happily sent one along. They also sent me this reflex sight, so we'll test this as well. Oh, sorry, you guys shouldn't have used it. Yeah. It's all right. To use these telescopes, you simply push the telescope so that what you want to see is lined up in the finder. Then you move over to the eyepiece to view your target. It's really that simple. Before every observing session, it's helpful to make sure that your finder and your telescope are pointed at exactly the same spot. This is so much easier to do during the day using a distant landmark, like a distant light or the tip of a flagpole. First, get the landmark centered in the telescope using a low-powered eyepiece. We're gonna turn the finder on with this knob right here. You're gonna use this knob here to move the finder up and down, and this knob here to move the finder left and right. Then you move back and forth between the finder and the telescope to make sure that the finder and the telescope are pointed at exactly the same spot. Hi. How's it going? Now, if you've just set up the telescope, the first thing you may need to check is the collimation. This assures that the mirrors are correctly aligned. For me, it looked like this telescope was good to go right from the factory, but it's always good to check. The easiest way to do this is to remove any eyepieces, Look into the focuser and first check that the image of the mirror at the back of the telescope looks centered in your field of view. Perfect. And second, check that the spider arms in the reflection are also centered. Perfect. After filming the daytime scenes for this video and realizing that the microphone was plugged into the headphone jack, we headed to the Miramichi airport to set up the telescope to view Jupiter during the town's light up the night celebration. All right, going for the uh, 18 millimeter eyepiece here. Now, usually astronomers aren't particularly happy about anything that lights up the night, but this did give us a chance to share the views through this telescope with the general public. So those are its moons, Jupiter's moons. Really? Oh my God, I can see those so clearly. Jupiter has we also didn't attempt to take any photos through the telescope, and as you may or may not know, as soon as you attach a camera, you leave the hobby of stargazing altogether and enter the far more challenging realm of astrophotography. Now the light pollution from all the cars made it challenging to view anything other than Jupiter, but we got to watch the drone show, which turned out to be pretty cool after all.
Wow! There's at least one sunspot in there. It's better than early last week. Jeez, yeah. that's nice. So the telescope's tracking the sun. We're gonna test Tiffany's telescope, which was my old telescope that she didn't even know. The mount is like, hello, old friend. <laughs> so I bought this mount for this scope like 10 years ago. So there's one axis. You got it. Yeah? yeah. Sweet. Hey, Doug. You know, it's funny because I'm literally using that telescope that you sold me right this second with John Reed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Important. Just arrived in Dope Town. Stop it. Let's for some coffee. And then we'll meet up with the rest of the crew and check out this eclipse. That's so neat. <laughs> Everyone is about to watch the total solar eclipse. We've got about five minutes left and everyone is getting real excited. They're picking out their spots and um, it's starting to get cold out here. Very eerie. <laughs> wow! I'm still recording and I've like forgotten. There's like a thing, a bright spot on the bottom. Do you see that? Oh look! Come, come. Just taking a closer look at this site that the company sent me, this is very impressive. You've got a dot here on the side and it enables you to not only change the brightness, but the color of the bullseye from red to green, which is pretty cool. And this knob on the back right here allows you to change the shape of the target. You've got like Telrad rings as one, uh, a cross as another, and you've also got this nifty <laughs> circle with points on it as a third option. So really quite cool. Hey, Stella. And to turn it off, you just slide it to either the R or the G uh, here. And that's sort of like setting the brightness to zero. Now we've got the telescope to its home here at Stargaze Nova Scotia, and hopefully in the near future, there'll be a roll-off roof observatory right here to house it. The goal will be for people to be able to rent the observatory with their kids and have an amazing night exploring the night sky. If you'd like to support Stargaze Nova Scotia, you can find us as Learn to Stargaze on Patreon. Here you'll get behind the scenes updates on the development of Stargaze Nova Scotia and learn how you can be a part of the adventure. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on our adventure to see the eclipse. And again, thanks to astroshop.eu for sending along the Dobsonian and the Finders. I'm sure they'll be well loved here at Stargaze Nova Scotia. Subscribe to Learn to Stargaze to get the most out of your stargazing experience. And remember, the future is looking up.